Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure SIG meeting. Today we are the 29th of August 2023 and around the table we got myself, Damien Duportal, Mark White, Stefan Merle, Bruno Verharten and Kevin Martins. Uh, let's get started with the weekly release. Um, the new release looks okay, so the version 2.421 is released, package, and Docker image is out. Um, so Stefan, go, go, go for you for, maybe you will have to restore the builds and merge and deploy, etc. Uh, or we can add a, a MagreDis to update CLI, uh, ready to roll for infra, and Next release item list ongoing. So I assume Kevin and Omar and all others will take care of the last item, especially changelog. Is that correct? Changelog has been merged and may already be visible now. Kevin did the, the corrections. I used his correct corrections, applied them, set it to auto merge, and it has merged as far as I know. Cool. Thanks, folks. Um, so that's all for the weekly. So no problem, which means the correct the corrections we did after last week weekly and LTS around the GDK 17 use for agents <clears throat> and Windows packaging and stuff. Uh, this cor this correction looks good. So we can proceed on the next steps. I don't have other announcement on top of my mind. Do you have some folks? Nope. Okay, so let's look at the upcoming calendar next week, 5th September of September 2023. Next week, we will have Jenkins version 2.422 next weekly. Uh, next LTS, I don't know when it is. I assume it will be a 2.40. Uh, 2.414.2. 2. Release lead is Chris Stern. Release lead is Chris Stern. Cool. And hang on, I can give you the exact date. I believe it's September, mm, September 20. Yeah, so 20 September. Free. Yeah. So okay. release candidate will be uh, 6 September. Cool. Let me add it as. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Um, do we have security advisory announced? None, so good. And next major event, do we have thumb? I don't believe. I don't remember an event where the infrastructure will be, the team will yeah, be present. So or DevOps member. World Tour is coming to I'll be writing a blog post today about it, actually. DevOps World Tour, New York, Chicago, um, Santa Clara, Singapore, London. Right. And we've got community, community speakers at each of those events. Cool. I don't have other major events. Good for you folks. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's start with the task we were able to finish during that milestone. Uh, we had a request from a plugin maintainer that they closed since. Um, so that request was about using uh, they, they asked the infrastructure to install Visuals uh, VS 2020 to SDK 
to benefit from a more recent version of msbuild.exe on the agent template for Windows on CI Jenkins IO. So I wasn't sure, so I asked for help. We had an answer from Vadek that I think is in line with my uh, questions. Mark, I wasn't aware that we were building and shipping binaries other, other than the Jenkins plugin. It looks like we shouldn't, but it's not clearly mandatory or forbidden. Is that yes, correct? There's, we certainly have shipped binaries in the past that were generated exe files for windows the windows service wrapper for instance has done that so so there's not there's not anything that says we can't ship them uh, so long as they're based on open source we're allowed to ship them we don't have anything forbidding that but in this case i don't see any reason why we would create the added liability for our infrastructure team of installing visual studio 2022 on our Windows machines. That Visual Studio 2022 is enormous and it's it's a difficult thing to track. I just don't see the value. So I agree with Vodak, we should not install it. They need to find another way to meet their needs rather than asking that the infra team take on the burden of VS Visual Studio 2022 when we only have possibly one or maybe two projects that need it. Okay. So did that answer your question, Damian? Yes, I think so. I'm not. Uh, I looked quickly at their plugin, and I don't believe that what they need to build is really the plugin itself. It sounds like they are building different things, and I think they should stick with AppVayor that they use with their own account for that part. Right. Uh, because our infrastructure is made for building plugins that are just shipped to Jenkins users. And I had the feeling that we were be we were being used as a freemium service, which is not the case. We are on Travis CI or something else. That's why I prefer to ask because I might be wrong and I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, based on your feedback and Vadek, I believe that the fact that the user closed the issue means okay, nothing to do. And, and I agree. We should not we sh this is one before we before we as an infra team take on the responsibility of keeping visual studio 2022 installed and updated on our we need to think very carefully that's a that's a major change yep visual studio is not some small thing it's it's enormous sorry cut issue uh, i agree with your assessment and um, because my question was if we need that that mean we also had to ensure that trusted can uh, can work on that, and particularly CD. Otherwise, they have to take care of their release. That might be a topic, so yeah, I don't think we should right. do but anything here. Yeah, they you, close the issue. Yeah, and and you, I hadn't even thought of the impact on Trusted and other places. Again, it, that's just too large for us to say, yes, we'll do that without very careful thought. So, yeah, so we can proceed. But thanks for the answer mm -hmm. and thanks Vadek for helping with that area. Another topic which is closed, uh, was able to run a batch command on old Artifactory users. They all have now the proper configuration. Uh, so I've added some numbers. So we know the order of magnitude of running some scripts against Artifactory. So I've closed it and we should not have any problem anymore unless we have a surprise from Artifactory. Um, after discussing with Stefan, Daniel and Mark, my proposal is the following, no more action required, but if the problem comes again, meaning if Artifactory has new surprising features deployed without uh, being written on their changelog, then we will have to add a monitoring job on trusted CI which has the admin token, and that will check for the user uh, correct setup. It's not required here because it was a one-time problem, but if the problem happen again, then we will we will go that direction. Um, yeah, we had users with problem. I cannot log in in Jenkins Artifactory anymore. So some user answered the question and fixed the problem. Some other didn't. Um, we had a 401, so I, that was before I fixed 
uh, Artifactory, so some plugin developer were blocked in releasing their plugin. So I quickly updated their setup. So that problem should not happen anymore. Last week, we had an issue with window download page not working. During the releases, we weren't able to catch that the Windows packaging failed for the weekly. And it also, we only cooked that when it was for the LTS, we realized, oh, both packages uh, are missing. Um, so we were able to fix the problem. And now I receive alerts again on page duty because I didn't. I should have. So I think it's because I changed my email settings. Uh, and we should be able to track that problem in the future by also covering more exhaustively the items of the list. And us and the infrastructure team should look carefully on uh, on these elements next time. That means looking at page duty should be part at the end of a given core release should be the last step we do before being able to close the day. Thanks everyone involved in that one. Um, so funny, funny one, when you are running a Windows inbound agent container image, be careful with the Java options. Every dash X column something options must be wrapped within literal double quotes on Windows because column is a special character in both PowerShell and BAT. So that means you need simple codes and then double quotes uh, wrapping each of these options on your command line set, or you can use double quotes and use backticks, <laughs> uh, backslash in order to uh, to have double code being literal. Yeah, funny one. I forgot about this one. Hopefully, Stefan wrote that documentation at least one year ago, so I should have known better. That was the root cause of that problem. Uh, finally, we help Excel Q that looks like a company that is publishing a plugin and they had issues uh, with the timeline. They switched to CD and they were waiting for the plugins. But the three hours of RPU and the three hours of um, plugins Jenkins means you have a maximum of six hours. Uh, so that means we are we could improve the documentation for developer because it's not clear on the developer documentation but they were able to successfully release their plugin and they were happy with it. So good work. Uh, I think that's all. I think we can look now on the other issue. Let me look at the notes. Yep, for close as not planned. So now work in progress, I'm taking So the two most important one, updates jenkinsci.io, the update center. Uh, so, we have a mirror system working on azure.updates.jenkins.io, at least uh, without mirrors working now, but we have the redirector system ready to use. Um, I took over after everyone went in holidays, so I was able during the past milestone to set up an internal AirSync system. The idea is that we can add Cloudflare uh, bucket where we don't pay outbound bandwidth to serve HTTP data. And when we add this to the mirror, we need to synchronize. So we are now synchronizing by scanning a local internal air sync while we have the remote system. So the next step now for me is to find the proper air sync URL, but the service is reachable and the mirror bit is trying to scan. So one step forward. I had to roll back some of the changes that Hervé and I did. We don't need that AirSync server to be publicly available. So I'm, I've rolled back this one, it's only internal. And the next step will be first, deploying the AirSync and Apache uh, copy on DigitalOcean public cluster. So we should be able to have two mirror, one on Cloudflare, which is on the US East and one on digital ocean where the, band the bandwidth cost is really cheap. We need two mirror to get started. Then next step will be once I've solved the sync port, having a scanning issue and integrating the synchronization from trusted CI, which updates plugin index every 15 minutes to copy the new index and data to both mirrors, not only to the current real life system. So it will be copied on three locations 
and to trigger every 15 minutes after successful copy a mirror scan. Once this will be done, so that should be in one or two days, we should be able to start pointing our Jenkins instances to that new service. Instead of updates Jenkins uh, IO, we will use Azure Update Jenkins IO to start checking the behavior of Jenkins controller. That, these are the next steps, and um, yeah, and um, uh, then we will. I will report next week, and Hervé will took over the next step after that. Any question? Okay. Next topic: access artifactory bandwidth reduction options. So we had a meeting with Gfrog last week. Uh, we need to plan. To, to fix the issue that we saw with the plugin repositories. Uh, two word things on the work I did and marked it. First, as uh, Mark commented on the issue, backend extension index a job as a word behavior. I wasn't able to deep dive on this one, Mark. I plan to do it uh, tomorrow. It looks like there is a specific setting in that build that force the usage of one or the other. I don't see any obvious reason why it's only trying to use Maven Central, uh, but there is a maven-settings.xml file at the root of the repository, which is a smell for me. I'm sure there is a specific Maven option somewhere that make it be uh, behave differently. Why did it start to fail though? I don't know. That one is weird. Um, we have uh, current virtual repository named helpdesk-3599 uh, on Artifactory that we can use to, to simulate. Right now, Mark, I wasn't able to, to, to fail a build with the Maven HPI plugin from scratch on my machine, but I used the settings XML forcing every connection to go there at least for the repo Jenkins, or to switch back to um, to central. So my next step will be tr to try this one and the bomb build where we saw failure. Um, I will need to, to get on the note to see what was the exact error we had regarding the plugin repository. However, I was able to reproduce the issue when building with the current system and without cleaning my Maven cache, and rebuilding with the new uh, the new virtual repo without central, I started to see warnings and then errors that say, oh, I see that dependency. I've marked that dependency as being downloaded from former repo, and now it's on the new one. That's the same checksum, but it's weird. I believe the error we had during the brownout could be related to a dependency already present somewhere, and we should change the metadata. Um, my gut feeling is that we are caching temporary files on ACP that we shouldn't. So I'm going to check uh, what the Maven specification says about this one. That's my status. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you had other points on that part regarding our uh, GFROG. Okay, so next step is trying to find any problem if we can't reproduce or can't find anything. We'll have to plan a brownout next week. Right. I believe that brownout should be this time with fully cleaned ACP. Mm. I think we have to, to, to run it from scratch. We, we used to move away the contents, but I think we'll just, we'll just remove everything and see how it behaves. Any question? Uh, Matomo GitHub Docker repo didn't add any time, so we can that one we keep it for the next uh, the next week. Stefan, your turn. IRM sixty four for application on the public cluster. No application have been migrated yet, but I worked on the shared pipeline library for the bake version. Um, I. I did finish today the unit test. And um, so for right now, my pull request is working as uh, before, building all the images with multi-platform compatibility in one, in one run. 
uh, next step will be probably in another pull request to deal with the, the difference between main and tag. Right now we use main to build, then to create a tag, and then that tag trigger a new uh, pipeline that is dealing with the deploy. We we don't really need to have those two paths and we can merge that in one, but we need to discuss how exactly we want to deal with that. But that will be in another pull request. So this one should uh, now be ready for review. I think it's still draft. I need to change that, but it should be ready for review now. Nice. And then I will be able to build the, the images for Wiki, for example, which was the one I tried a lot and uh, and to migrate those uh, services on the RRM that now that should be easier. Cool, next step is Wiki. We'll have yes. to wait. Uh, two things we discover on that part. Uh, the first one is we should be able to do the same work, but it's not mandatory for the RM64 part. Uh, but in the pipeline library, we will be able to replace the uh, tons of makefile shell and groovy code, groovy code being the worst here, because not reproducible, um, to use the same technique as the one we had for the official Jenkins agent images. When we build Windows, we use a Docker Compose YAML file that has the same purpose as the Docker Bake. The reason is that Docker Bake doesn't work for container for Windows container. So same idea as what uh, Stefan said, same convention. We should set up uh, using a Docker Compose YAML file, but that's not mandatory here, and that will cover the Windows case. Uh, and second thing is that we will have to <clears throat> to update Docker inbound agents, uh, our Windows image. We are we'll have to migrate them to a a bake file, a proper bake file, but your experimentation shows that the holder path are working. So you don't have to focus on this one right now. That means on the end, less pipeline code, which is a good thing. Uh, next step is Wiki. And if Wiki works, I will have to ask you to work on Matomo image. Yes. Matomo, Mamoto, Matomo, Matomo. Anyway. If it is, okay. Uh, nothing down on Matomo. Okay, thanks, Stefan. Next point is remove IP restriction on bounds or migrate to VPN for trusted CI Jenkins. So I haven't worked on, on this directly on trusted. However, I've set up the expected behavior with third CI Jenkins. So that one will be done on the upcoming milestone. Um, mm -mm. Here, uh, validated the setup for the new search CI. Got to apply to trusted next milestone. So the idea is that in order to reach the SSH machine of trusted CI Jenkins SIO, you will have to only use the VPN, meaning no need for a public IP anymore to reach that machine. That will be an internal IP and only, only that people with the proper uh, permissions on the VPN and the full VPN access will be able to reach, which is clearly easier than having a low list of public IP from, per, from people. Um, next one on the list, LF status page redirect may be cached for too long. No feedback. Mark is going uh, in the discussion with CDF and LF on that topic today. So we'll have maybe some news, but that's not important. Uh, no action expected from the team. Next one, ATH build commonly become unresponsive. So that's pipeline code. That will be the next step after Stefan, you finish on, on, uh, on the pipeline library. It's a few pipeline line of code, but that can take some time to try, but yeah. Is that okay to keep it on the milestone or do you want to put it on backlog? Okay. Keep it here, keep it here. 
Euh, command prompt, Stéphane. Yeah. I started this one locally on my on my uh, computer with background. Um, I think I matched where to uh, to deal it. I am struggling with uh, the escaping between um, all the all the tools, ERB and interpolation from there and there until the prompt. So um, work in progress. Okay. Should I, uh, do you need help or pairing or that will resolve uh, when you will have time to spend on this one? I may need your help, but I, I would like to try to spend more time on that when, if I get some time. Mm -hmm. But when, but when. Whip on local vagrant by Stefan. Working against the escaping of Puppet template. Okay. Exactly. Uh, need a quick pair to unblock efficiently. Otherwise, need time. Is that correct? Exactly. Perfect. Um, nothing done. Should be worked after pipeline library for RM64. Okay. Yeah, this one is is more important than the VM because it's it's money inside. Sorry, sorry. The attached build commonly become yes. responsive. They can save money with the. Um, yep, spot and then on demand. Spot and then spot. Yes, exactly. I, I've put both of us on this one. I propose okay. that we pair on this instead of okay. working separately. Thank you for a, a faster bond, a team bond with. Is that okay for you? That's perfect. Thank you. Um, third CI Jenkins IO, the virtual machine used by the Jenkins security team, that's a specific and hidden and restricted controller. That virtual machine has been migrated to a new VM in a new network with agents that are more powerful but cheaper. Yeah, that's true. Thanks AMD for the epic uh, CPUs on data centers. Uh, so it has been migrated yesterday and for the upcoming milestone, um, we should be able to remove the former resources. The plan is to do it tomorrow, uh, two days after the migration. We have a backup of the Jenkins home data inside our uh, production backup vault and the team is able to access using the new VPN. By Can the I... way, I've stopped Sorry. the VPN, the former VPN machine yesterday, just to be sure we don't forget about anything. So the plan is tomorrow to delete the former VPN, former third CI and former legacy network resources on Azure. So we won't have any problem. I think you did disable the pipeline library, um, the pipeline of uh, Kubernetes pipeline for that. Can I re-enable it now? So no and no. Okay, sorry. I thought that was yes, because of the... Yes, I disabled it, but it wasn't for that part. Oh, it sorry, was for update why. center that's change. Why. You cannot oh. update it now uh, because I'm still working on it. I'm going to okay. commit my change so you will be able, but after our meeting. I thought that was uh, true. That's why. Yep. No big deal. But a good thing for you to ask when we are all here. Um, so the next step uh, for the next, I will add it on the links, but we'll have the old VPN machine, which costs a lot of money because it's a big machine, because it requires multiple network interfaces. And we will have removed the, the remnant of legacy. So three issues that should be completed on cleanup part for the upcoming milestone. I'm adding them right now. Any question on this one? Okay, uh, so then next issue is plugin site build commonly fail on infra CI. So that one is going to the backlog because I don't have time. So maybe Hervé will take it. Um, <clears throat> gonna add it up back to backlog. And finally, Stefan. We also have high availability of replicated services. We need to work on the anti-affinity. Given the high load of tasks that you have on your backlog, is that okay if I take it? Yes, please. Um, 
no more try age for this one. Okay, I think that's all for the issues we had work in progress. So I've started working on this one on my side by reading again uh, documentation of Kubernetes because I I tend to forget everything each time, so I need documentation to remind. Oh, oh, that is, is that it's working like this. Okay, uh, and that's all for me. Done. Got to remove tomorrow. Uh, do you have other topics that you worked on and I could have forgotten? I'm not sure you want to mention the fact that we we may try to change the GDK twenty one early access oh, point with yep. Bruno. May I ask you to create an issue to track this, please? <laughs> with pleasure. <laughs> Bruno, can you please? <laughs> yeah. Work resources to be. Um, let me add it to be removed also tomorrow. So new subject, let me add a note. New subject, um, GDK 21 change from nightly builds to weekly EA builds in the infra. Uh, that EA builds are already used by Jenkins official images for the GDK 21 preview allows tracking GDK 21 with a version with update CLI. Is that yeah? That's, is that assessment correct? That's what we want to try. And should simplify the puppet configuration for our infra. Is Let's that see. is that assessment correct? Is that the second value? In, in, in fact, we'll see. Uh, right now, I'm not completely sure for what I saw, but we need to spend more time. I, I don't speak about implementation details that might have tons of if and then else, which is not a problem because we already did the same kind of thing for the other GDK. But in terms yeah. of configuration, that should be clearly simplified. Someone setting or maintaining one of our controller would not have to specify a nightly date version for each of the GDK architecture for each agent tooling. Agreed. Don't forget Packer image. We started by that. Good. VPN.jenkins.io legacy network cleanups. OK, let's look at the new issues, if we have some. Uh, thanks for the issue. Oh, wow. You rocks, folks. <laughs> Uh, we had an issue from Alex, remove account request field from Jira login page. I'm going to add this one also to our new milestone. Um, when someone uh, log in to issues Jenkins IO, there is an unexpected message, as you can see, that say to request an account, please contact and some message with links. And these element, that link and that message shouldn't be there or should point to account Jenkins IO. Uh, so I'm not sure how we can change that. That requires a Jira administrator. So nothing expected from you folks. I will look on this or ask for help most of the time. Yeah, it's Jira, so eh, not my friend. Uh, do we have new other topics? I think that's really already a lot. No new topics. So that means we will see each other next week, uh, the 5th of September. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to stop recording. So for people watching the recording, see you next week. See you.